So, first you, you come up with this play, Human Remains, which is just a lightning bolt through theater. And then you come up with Poor Superman. You've got to be riding high. Mm -hmm. You've got to be feeling so good. Mm -hmm. you know? What like what's going through your system right now? Like what's uh, what do you well? I, I pretty much feel like I'm on top of the world. I mean, I'm, I'm reading things like I've seen the future of uh, English Canadian theater, and it's Brad Fraser, and I'm on the cover of Saturday Night Magazine, and I'm, you know, a period, they're calling me up to be on TV twice a week. I never get paid for it, but it's a lot of exposure, and you know, people are recognizing me on the street. I mean, I really, I don't know another playwright in Canada who had that kind of, even to this day, who had that kind of attention that I had, and I guess, I think a lot of it had to do with being the right person at the right time, that this gay Métis playwright from Alberta was a breath of fresh air compared to all the white guys who went to university in Toronto who were running and writing for most of the theaters, you know. And um, so, your show's going on, uh, 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 here, but also you had a production in New York, and Derek Goldby directed that as well. Derek Goldby directed that, and okay. actually Sam Rockwell was in that production. Oh, wow. And Clark Gregg, who is you know the the king of the Marvel universe, he's Agent Coulson. That's right. Uh, was in that. Scott Renderer, Lenore Zan from Toronto, a number of really really quite amazing actors. And uh, again, you know, it opens in New York and it's got this big buzz, but the reviews are not that good. I've never to this day, I've not got a good review from the New York Times for anything I've ever done, ever. Uh, and there was a kind of sniffiness, a kind of um, cultural misogyny, if you will, about Canadians writing about sex and what do Canadians know about sex and stuff. And, you know, frankly, I know a lot more about sex than most people who put on shows in New York, and you only have to read the plays to see it. But there was this kind of um, sort of condescending attitude that kind of pissed me off about it. And yet, uh, people were, were talking about it and writing about it like crazy, and, and the movie studios got interested, right? Mm -hmm. It was like this show in New York, and wow, this is so muscular, and it's so good, and we've never seen anything like this, and all of a sudden I'm getting phone calls from 20th Century Fox and people like that, and someone I won't mention which studio it was actually calls me up and said, you know, oh, hey, Brad, we saw your show, we love it, it was a great show, we think it'd make a great movie, we just have one thing, would you mind if we made the ca same character, the main character straight? I was like, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. No, we won't be doing that, and then, um, Denis Arcos saw it in Montreal. Uh, 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 Theatre Katsu did a production of it that was hugely successful for them in French, translated by um, Michel Tremblay's translator and director, whose name is going to escape me right now. And um, it, it's a huge hit, and Denis sees it and he says, this is the movie I want to make next. Mm -hmm. And so I get a call through my agent from Denis saying, you know, can we talk about your film? And I'm like, yeah, of course, I've seen Jesus in Montreal. I love the movie. It's a, an amazing movie. This is, this is the kind of person I want to direct it. So he got the rights. He got the rights to make it. And then it became the whole thing about I'm writing the screenplay and are we setting it in Edmonton? Can we film it in Edmonton? I want it to be in Edmonton. We get it all together and the Alberta Film Association goes, no, we're not going to give you any kind of breaks on this. So the producers who didn't want to film it in Edmonton anyway say, great, we'll film it in Toronto. Mm -hmm. They treat me so well. I mean, literally, they call me from the set if they want to change a line. They bring me on to the set for three or four days to just hang out and watch how a film is made and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. watching it and I'm kind of going, well, I don't know a lot about filmmaking, so mm -hmm. maybe I'm not seeing it. You know, maybe it'll all be there in the editing or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm feeling like these actors are getting away with their first choices a lot, mm -hmm. and it's not very specific, and the rhythm is really wrong. And I'm thinking, okay, well, hopefully they will, you know, they'll fix this up. And I'm only here for this one scene. What do I know? And everybody on the crew is amazing, and Denis is wonderful, Roger Frappier, the producers, everyone is so good to me. And uh, then it's done, and they're editing it, and I'm working on Poor Superman, and they want to fly me to New York to see a preview at the, um, at a, I can't remember the name of the theater on uh, 41st Street, where they do a lot of the director's stuff, uh, the director's guild stuff. And I walk in there, and I sit down with a full house, because it's a test audience, and I watch the movie, and it's such a disappointment for me. It's long, it's boring, it has the same pacing throughout, I don't really like the acting all that much, you're not allowed to say any of these things at the time. But I go home and I write Denis and Roger a letter, a very clear one, telling them what I think the issues with the, the film are, what I think works, what I think doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they actually do some of the stuff, they actually make some of the cuts and things that I suggest. Oh, great. But for me, the movie never 
really takes off, and I really feel like it's, it doesn't capture that uh, friction and that uh, kind of energy that the play had, and I'm and not danger. sure why. And, and then a short time later, I saw actually a, a video of the um, French production of the play, and it's not being done like my play at all. It's being done like a, a Michel Tremblay play or something. It's very heartfelt and it's very slow and it's very emotive. And no, 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 my work is all snip, snap, let's go, it's repartee. But you know, the French are treating it differently. And I'm not gonna say that's right or wrong because thousands of people loved it. I'm not gonna tell them they're wrong, but it didn't work for me. And now I understand why the movie became what it did after seeing what the play was, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. It mm -hmm. wasn't what I had envisioned, it wasn't what I had intended. And it didn't do that well. Right. You know, it, mm -hmm. really, it really did not do that well. I mean, some people liked it, it got some good reviews, but it didn't really make a lot of money. It didn't get into the Toronto Film, oh, it did get into the Toronto Film Festival, yeah, it yeah. didn't get into something else. Oh, um, Khan was where they were really hoping to get it in, it didn't happen there. Uh, and that, that's a whole other world, and that was my first taste of the film world, and while I liked the money, mm -hmm. that was sort of all I liked about it. What was it like going from writing plays to screenplays? What was that transition like for you? Well, it was interesting because everyone, you know, all through my career has said, oh, we, you know, we just have to film this. You write with such a filmic, uh, uh, a filmic style, and it's true. I use a lot of filmic conventions, but I theatricalize them, and what we found out when we were adapting the play to the movie is that, um, actually the play works too fast for film. Theater is too fast for film. Scenes that would register on the stage because of our peripheral knowledge of where the other characters are and all that kind of stuff, I actually had to lengthen them for the film because they wouldn't register if they were the 10 seconds they were or whatever on the stage. So mm -hmm. it was really uh, an amazing learning experience to, and I'm so glad I had Denis there to take me through that and to help me understand it because it was probably the most valuable thing that came out of that experience was that initial kind of understanding for them and me, that although I'm using filmic conventions on the stage, it doesn't make the plays immediately filmable. In fact, quite the opposite. And that's something that I've carried around with me to this day, that, that theater is faster than film. Mm -hmm. And that we can tell a story quicker, and we can get audiences to where we want them to be faster because their imagination is doing it. Whereas if you're doing it on a film, you actually have to do it. You know, if I write a scene that says, uh, we're at the bottom of the ocean in the city of Atlantis filled with fish people and we turn on a green light and we have two actors there going, I'm a fish person. We're there, <laughs> yeah. right? And the next scene we're on the moon and we're, we're in a city of made of opalescence and pearls and they're all moon people and they all have two heads and the actors go, oh, I've got two heads, we change the light and the audience goes there. Mm -hmm. If you do that for film or TV, you have to build those sets, you have to get those fish people, you have mm -hmm. to get those moon people. It's really difficult to do, it takes a very long time. You always have technology getting in the way of actually telling the story in an immediate fashion because as soon as you start filming and editing, it takes time, right? Whereas in the theater, three weeks, four weeks, we rehearse it, we got it there, it's up. If it's not working, if something happens in the world or whatever that I want reflected on, on the stage, I come in, I talk to the actors that day. They put mm -hmm. the changes in that night. Yeah, you exactly. can't do that with a movie. And also, yeah, the process of movie making is so long. Oh my God. It's really laborious.